Hi everybody, um, my name is Neely Bucklew and I'm sorry I can't be there in Florence with you. I'll either be on my way or nearly uh, at the ashram where I'll be gathering more research for the data that I'm actually going to be presenting to you today. It's mobile EEG and yoga and everyday life that I've been doing with Dr. Greg Siegel. So first I just want to let you know I have nothing to, dis to disclaim. So it's important to me to say my thank yous first and I really want to thank Dr. Greg Siegel uh, for all of his uh, hard work and support in doing this. Um, and I also would like to thank Dr. Stephanie Studensky, who's at UPMC Pittsburgh. She uh, helped me with my funding through the National Institute of Aging. I also really personally like to thank uh, Gary Krofsau. He's uh, the director of the American Vinny Yoga Institute, um, and he has been uh, pivotal in allowing me to come to his uh, teacher trainings and uh, gather this uh, research. And Katie Kemp, who's a friend and was very supportive uh, in me being able to collect all this data. Also, David Lasondak, who is filming this video as I speak. I'm both a clinician and a researcher. I'm currently a resident in a physical medicine and rehabilitation program at the University of Pittsburgh. Before coming to medical school, I was a naturopath. I was trained in a number of modalities, including Ayurvedic medicine, which includes therapeutic yoga, and I've been studying and, and practicing yoga since I was 12. Um, and I'm also a researcher. I was trained at the University of Pittsburgh, first as a medical student and then through the National Institute of Aging. My research is about yoga. Yoga is a very rich and diverse uh, practice. It's a, really a matrix. It's not a singular practice. It's rooted in Eastern traditions and it's over 5,000 years old. So you can imagine how much diversity there would be. It encompasses way more than what, at least we see in, in the States, way more than spandex and hatha yoga, which is the more gymnastic form of yoga. Uh, there are many ways and means of yoga. Uh, there's many different elements and philosophies to yoga, and most of them begin with the exploration and the practice of ethical living. All of them encompass the practice of breathing uh, called pranayama. A basic tenet of all yoga is that uh, with consistent and a focused practice, it can quiet the fluctuations of the mind. And that phrase actually comes from uh, the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, which was a sage and a practitioner of yoga um, a few thousand years ago, maybe three thousand years ago, who tried to summarize the more secular aspects of yoga reiterate that a really consistent means um, of yoga is the breath and learning to use the breath to quiet the mind. And there are hundreds of studies that document the positive effects of yoga um, in, on the mental and emotional health as well as physical health. And there's a growing body and it's encouraging of level 1A um, um, evidence. Uh, What's interesting here in the States is um, the U.S. Department of Veteran Affairs has really embraced yoga uh, in a number of ways and they're now using it to successfully prevent combat stress, so not just to treat it but to prevent it. Well, wow, there's a growing body of literature of the positive effects of yoga on pain control, particularly chronic low back pain, which is the area I've been researching, and pain-associated disability. But the interesting thing about the research is that a vast majority of it is qualitative, so um, things like pain measures or quality of life. We really haven't looked that closely at the mechanisms and so the mechanisms are not well understood. And there is a rich literature of EEG data on persons meditating during only a seated practice. A seated practice in a lab setting, which is pretty artificial. There are no studies of the brainwave states um, of persons doing a meditative practice, whether it be seated or um, moving uh, in a real life setting. Now that we have this technology available to us, mobile EEG, can we take this out into a real life setting and use it to gather data, understand the brainwave state of a person practicing yoga in a real life setting? Our next set of questions uh, were, well, what kind of process can we apply to see the effects of a consistent and focused yoga practice on the brainwave states of individuals who are practicing yoga? The other question we asked ourselves is, is there a common experience of quieting the mind? Can we see that somehow? So our population is a healthy uh, volunteer yoga pr practitioners. These practitioners are part of a Vini Yoga training program uh, that I've been taking part in, and this is Gary Kraskow's 
uh, training program. We worked with the healthy practitioners to answer both set of questions. Uh, the practitioners were 18 to as old as anybody wanted to participate. Uh, it's a collection of people from all over the world, male and female, who are taking part in this training. The setting is in an ashram in Buckingham, Virginia. Uh, there are two time periods where I collected the data that I'm presenting to you today. The first question was taking the mobile EEG to the ashram and seeing if people could tolerate simply wearing it while they're doing their practice. Can we get a consistent read in the data, um, etc. I mean, can we actually put this on someone and uh, gather good data? The second set of questions uh, was looking at a common experience, so I picked a particular practice that's um, very easy for one to learn and consistently practice, and it's a kundalini practice, it's called a kirtan kriya, and the reason I picked this particular practice is uh, there's a very good research on it um, in other ways, looking at mechanisms, and so there's a very interesting paper on uh, with consistent practice of this particular um, method that uh, you can increase telomerase activity. So the practitioners were taught to do this to repeat sa, ta, na, ma. Most of them chanted in sort of a monotone way. And with each uh, syllable, there is a, a mudra, a hand movement. So this is sa, ta, na, ma. Uh, they repeat this over and over uh, for two minute intervals, first loudly and then moderately and soft and silent, and then they come back out. Uh, and when we did the data collection, we taught them the uh, chant at the first um, session and uh, took the baseline data and then they came back six months later after um, consistent practice and we uh, had them sit down and do the chant again and gathered the data. So we took our mobile EEG lab with us. Uh, Dr. Siegel at this point has probably explained to you what the Motive headset looks like. I had to use two computers. Uh, to um, gather the data. I used one computer for the calibration. The calibration is the key to the assessment of um, the data that we gathered. Dr. Siegel probably explained some of the, the uh, approaches to our calibration. For my calibration in particular, you know, we want to assess the brain state of the person prior to doing their practice. And so we look at a number of domains, or we test a number of domains, including physiologic, uh, for me, I really focused on uh, breathing, um, as well as gross motor activities. Um, we looked at emotion using pictures um, that uh, have uh, validated uh, valence and arousal levels. Uh, we also assessed cognitive processes, having um, people count for us, repeat sounds, um, read a passage aloud, tap their fingers, sitting, standing, moving their arms. Contrasts of interest. For uh, this particular study, we really wanted to look at things that were either potentially unique to yoga or ther theoretically stopped by yoga. Um, so we contrasted things like counting versus breathing, repeating a sound versus reading, uh, rumination versus breathing, etc. For when we did both assessments, I would use the emotive uh, software to send markers um, or to mark along the EEG where a new um, activity would take place. Once I gathered the data, we analyzed the data using MATLAB um, to both process the raw EEG and to apply our calibration process. For each contrast, we did a robust regression of maximally predictive weighted sums that represented the contribution of each channel, which is 14 channels and all four bands. So for each contrast, we looked how the weighted sums behaved during satana ma as one became more silent. Um, specifically, how the weighted sums varied with the changes during the chanting from loud to soft. And as experienced, so it was a summation of how this, uh, the experience, the brainwave state experienced by all the participants as a group. So a priori, we were looking for the shared experience that I talked about before at baseline and then see if there's a replication of the shared experience at the second session. And then we were also looking at the theoretical neurology. I, I talked a lot about the importance of breathing. And so a lot of my contrasts were something versus breathing. Um, so was there a shared experience, something like regulated breathing? Our results, so with the first question, can it be done, um, the 
mean age of the participants was 49.6. Um, they've been practicing yoga um, anywhere around 15 years. Um, most of them were female, 20 females to two males. Uh, all of them were Caucasian and all of them were highly educated in both groups. Um, the same, similar mean age, 49, similar uh, years practicing yoga, 11. Um, ratio higher female to male ratio 5 to 1. The re answer to the first question is yes, this can be done. Uh, we were very successful um, with using the mobile EEG uh, while pers people practiced uh, yoga, including postures where they were inverted, laying down. So it's very easy to do. Everyone tolerated the um, mobile EEG, EEG very well. They were able to keep it on during um, the entire class. And uh, one thing we did learn, though, from one, or at least I learned from one session to the next, is uh, the mobile EEG actually stayed on a lot better using um, a cloth that we call do-rag. For the answer to the second question, we applied our uh, contrast. We also did a simulation of the mean EEG correlations with a step function, um, where we found that the a mean simulated EEG correlation did not exceed negative 0.3 to 0.3. So what's shown here on this slide is the correlation. On the x-axis is the time interval, so two minutes. So those steps going up, those uh, step lines, are the two minute intervals from going from loud to softer to silent. So on the y-axis, that just uh, tells you that a new event is taking place. The red line represents the regression, which is the summation of the 14 channels and four bands. And so what it's showing you here in this particular contrast is that it's more like breathing than marching. Breathing is high, marching is low. And then the second uh, uh, common experience we found from baseline to the next uh, session, six months later, is that satanama was more like rumination than waving arms. So on this slide you see the, the regression that represents that. So in this case, waving is low and rumination is high, so it's a negative correlation. So in this next slide, I just wanted to show you two different participants at the two different sessions in the positive correlation that satanama is more like breathing. So again, you see the positive correlation for um, the participant in the first session in the top part of the slide, and then the positive correlation for another participant in the um, second session. And these are just to show to illustrate that the findings were consistent. And then this next set of graphs is to show you um, a single participant and how their experience was consistent from session one to session two, where satanama was more like rumination um, than waving. And then the answer to the um, theoretical neurology, so again we come back to the breathing, and breathing being a very important part of yoga, is when we looked at the data, um, we wanted to see that with, if with consistent focus practice, satanama was more like breathing. And so it was interesting to find when we looked from session one to session two, that in fact satanama was more like breathing, and um, breathing in any manner, whether it was fast or slow, eyes open, eyes closed, standing or sitting. If we compared any, any type of regulated breathing to any of our other domains, and breathing uh, was positively and significantly correlated with satanama. So, in conclusion, what we can say about our research at this point, which is still very preliminary, um, mobile EEG is possible. I mean, we can take it out into a real-life setting and record the brain state of people practicing yoga. And we also found that, yes, we can find common experiences with the process that we're creating to analyze the data, and we can see effects with consistent focus practice. So what we can say about satana ma is that it seems to be an internal process, uh, much like breathing or rumination, and that we, we can also say that with consistent practice that satana ma's brain state is more like breathing. It is a small study. We're really just at the beginning, and the sample size for satana ma was five people, but we did have 22 people to participate in answering the f first question. Uh, we do have a female preponderance. Um, that's actually reflective of the population practicing yoga throughout the world, though. Uh, strengths are statistical analysis is rigorous. Um, what we're doing is intrepid. No one has really done this before, and we are creating a process uh, that no one else has created as of yet. And we're really trying to match 
um, mechanism with philosophy. The base philosophy of yoga is it quiets the fluctuations of the mind, and I think that's what we want to be looking at, and we're creating uh, a way to do that. So in the future, what we hope to do with uh, what we've learned so far is to take the process that we apply to Satana Ma and apply that to another new set of data uh, where I'm collecting, have collected and will be collecting data and 10 people have been doing a consistent uh, practice with asana, with posture and movement. Our overall goal is to apply what we've learned uh, with the mobile EEG and the process that we've created uh, to use that in a more clinical setting and looking at yoga uh, therapeutically. Um, there's a couple of studies that we're um, formulating. Um, one's in particular uh, Vini Yoga for treatment of fibromyalgia and also uh, Vini Yoga in older adults uh, to improve balance and function in everyday life. Uh, again, this is Neely Buckaloo and I uh, thank you very much for your time and I hope you enjoy the rest of your conference.